also don't begin from the place of, because Allen always begins from placing Israel in, in a defensive position and saying, what would you do if these people were firing upon you? The problem with that logic is that that begins with, uh, with Palestinian resistance as opposed to uh, Israeli occupation. If you begin from the place of Israeli occupation and you talk Palestinian resistance to that, then suddenly the question should be, what would you do if you're Israel and you're an apartheid state and you're an occupying force? That, to me, is the more well, fundamental you're, question you're here. And again, I'm not, and let me hold on, Alan, and, and, and hold on, Alan, and hold on, Alan, please. And once again, I'm not defending, I'm not defending the killing of innocent children. I'm not defending breaking of ceasefires. I'm not suggesting that Hamas is above critique. I'm not pro-Hamas. I'm anti-occupation. And that's a very different conversation. And that's what the United Nations is attempting to do. Apartheid states were engaging in bigotry. Look, I fought against apartheid. I was part of the legal team for Nelson Mandela. I know what apartheid is. How dare you call Israel an apartheid state? Arabs and Jews work together, live together, serve in the Knesset together. This is what's happening all the time. Like, and usually they, they, they tell us, okay, three hours, you wait at a checkpoint three hours. You know it means three hours. Three hours and three hours and three hours. Every day like this. And they arrest, you know, here, every day almost uh, one or two Palestinians. For nothing. It's like this. Yeah. And yeah, every day. And if we the West Bank city of Hebron is a flashpoint in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Settler activity has led to violence against Palestinian civilians, destruction of Palestinian property, and abuse of Palestinian rights under international law. Discriminatory privileges for settlers further compound these abuses and create an environment in which settlers can act with apparent impunity. Limitations de movimiento para que esa rua, a, esa llamada Shujada Street, esté pechada, haya dos caminos, un para los palestinos y para los colonos judíos, una estrada asfaltada, una estrada que evidencia que hay una división, que evidencia que hay una discriminación manifiesta. Ahí va un colono. Na súa rúa, construída especialmente para eles, e aquí vai a xente palestina, totalmente separada. On vient donc de traverser Hebron, on a vu que c'est une ville magnifique, qui a un potentiel économique énorme, e ce potentiel n'est pas du tout mis en valeur, les gens sont dans une situation de souffrance énorme, Et ensuite, quand on franchit cette euh, ligne de démarcation, on voit de l'autre côté un endroit désert. Enfin, tout ça est irréaliste. This was the main street in Hebron. It was full of shops. It was the center of the city and, and city life. And now, as you can see, it's closed. Not only are the shops closed, but the whole street is closed to any Palestinians. I can stand here because I'm not Palestinian. And the Israeli settlers can use this street, the soldiers use this street, the police who are here to look after the settlers use this street. But if the Palestinians want to travel down this way in the city, then they have to go up behind this wall and through the graveyard. It really is a system like apartheid. They destroyed many shops in 2000, and they rebuilt them again, but the uh, army kept them closing. And then when, when the shop closed, he lost everything. And then when the shop closed, he lost everything. All his income was lost after they closed his shop. Well, you, you, your moral censure aside, I'd like to respond to that. First of all, if you look right now, uh, there, there's first, second, and third class citizenship for Israelis versus uh, 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 Arab Israelis and Palestinian Israelis. Uh, excuse me, Arab Israelis uh, and, uh, and Palestinians. Please, Arabs. Please, Alan, Please, Alan let Mark respond. That's just so unacceptable. Um, I think we were, were all shocked by that, and uh, I don't think that people 
outside uh, know that, that I don't think they realize to what extent there is segregation and discrimination here. Freedom of movement is a prerequisite for accessing basic human needs such as health care, education, government institutions, workplaces, and for maintaining social, cultural and family ties. The Israeli army has enforced systematic movement restrictions which have become effectively permanent in some cases. These restrictions impact upon most aspects of Palestinian life and violate many of their basic rights and entitlements under international law. Hay toda una política de restricciones de los movimientos a través de los llamados checkpoints, a través de los numerosos controles, las barreras. Hay nada más y nada menos que en el territorio palestino 521 unidades, espacios físicos, impedimentos que fan cada día para ir a escuela, para ir a trabajar, para ir a ver a un familiar tenían que pasar esos controles. Nos mismos también os vimos, os sufrimos, eh, y desde luego pues fue un ejemplo de lo que pasa y sufre diariamente el pueblo palestino. En los dos días que viajamos, we were stopped at checkpoints. Um, once I went to get off the bus, and the, the bus was searched. The second time we we didn't have to get off the bus, but we were stopped and held up in a checkpoint. That was as visitors. Um, not living here, but still having our schedule disrupted by the, the checkpoints. People living here, of course, have that all the time, every day, several times a day. Israeli checkpoints in the occupied West Bank have become part of everyday life for the thousands of Palestinians who must pass through them daily. They are a form of collective punishment turning Palestinian cities into prisons. Talked about Israel being an apartheid state. Number one, number two, Israel. Address those points I made, though. Address those points I made, Alan. Address those points and say.